Hi, I'm Barry Olney from InCircuit Design. This is a quick overview of the ICD Design Integrity suite of tools that incorporates the Stack Up Planner, the PDN Planner, and the CoPlanner Waveguide Planners. Plus, it has many unique features specifically developed for high speed design. First of all, let's look at the ICD Stack Up Planner. You can see here we have nine default layer stack ups from two layers up to 18. These are a really good starting point for any stack up. You can drag and drop layers around, modify them any way you like, but it's a good starting point. Let's look at a 10 layer DDR3 stack up that we have already set up here. Here we're using Isola High Speed 370HR material at one gigahertz. And you'll notice over here we have blind and buried uh, vias set up and also plated through a hole via. Uh, we set these up in the via span definition. And here we have the plated through a hole which goes from one layer one to ten, a buried via which is from three to eight, and a blind via from two to three and also from one to two. With the ICD stack up planner we can also set up any number of differential pairs uh, for each layer. Here we have 50 100 ohm digital, so we have 50 ohms characteristic impedance roughly and 100 ohms differential. For DDR3 we need 40 ohms single ended and 80 ohms differential, USB is 90 ohms differential. So we can have all these represented on the same stack up at once. To modify the materials we can go to our extensive library of over 31,275 materials. Here we have a list of all the manufacturers. You can see here we have all the top material manufacturers like Arlon, Rogers, Doosan, DuPont, etc. From these we can select any material we like and we can select any frequency up to 100 gigahertz. So we have both rigid and flexible materials in the library. For any particular layer we can adjust the impedance by using the heads up impedance plots. And these give us a good indication of which way to adjust like the trace width, the trace thickness, trace clearance and differential coupling in order to get the correct impedance. And the same goes for materials. We can adjust the dielectric thickness or dielectric constant to give us a different values. One of the really good features of the ICD stick up planner is the signal flight time. Now here we can adjust or we can set the, the length of each layer on a in a substrate and I can plot a graph of this. So by selecting different lengths we can get the relative signal propagation delay. And if I want to match that to length, so I want to match that to 2 inches, we set the length to all 2 inches and you can see here the flight time varies considerably. The microstrip top and bottom layers are much faster than the inner strip line layers. So we need to adjust those. So what we do is match the delay. That matches all the delay to 350 picoseconds. But you can see here the length of the top and bottom layers is 2.44 inches and 2 inches on the inner layers. That's very helpful for DDR memory writing. Also, knowing the impedance of the transmission line is one thing, but we also need to determine the value of a series terminate in order to dampen the signal. So let's look at a typical Micron DDR2 memory device. We'll select a particular package and we'll look at the DQ0 data byte. And you can see here that we have 50 1.38 ohms, which is the impedance of this layer we selected, and a tra trace length of 2 inches. We can adjust the number of loads. We can also select the model. So if we look at a full strength 800 megahertz driver, it, you can see here we need a 26.7 ohm resistor in series with the transmission line close to the source. If we choose a half strength driver, we only need an 8.25 ohms. So this is very useful in setting up the, the data byte lanes for DDR2, 3 and 4. Once we've set up a stack up, we can export it to Excel. And this brings up the complete stack up in Excel, which we can send to the PCB fabricator. It has all the impedances and trace widths and clearances set up for the three different differential pairs we have and it also has all the 
plated through hole and wine and varied via specifications. We also have interfaces you can export to Allegro, Altium Designer, Hyperlinks, and we also have the IPC 2581 A and B formats, which are very popular now. We can also import using these interfaces. Next, we'll look at the ICD PDN planner. Here's a new PDN, and first of all, what we need to do is set up the voltage regulator module. Normally, we have switch mode, but we could have a linear mode regulator. Um, we need to select the voltage for DDR2, for instance, it's 1.8 volts maybe a maximum current of 3 amps and this gives us the target impedance which is 60 milliamps and this is the plot here of the target impedance it increases with frequency due to skin effect we can also set the minimum maximum frequency up to 100 gigahertz and the target frequency we may want to set this to say 800 for DDR2 so this gives us our cutoff point we can also set up different harmonics, 3rd, 5th, 7th, etc. And what we're looking for here is we don't want the plane resonant to peak on any of these odd harmonics or it could cause radiation. We can insert a capacitor from an extensive library of 5,650 components. Let's select 100 nanofarad and this gives us a graph of the 100 nanofarad capacitor it's typical to have about 20 of these and that pushes down our PDN considerably if we add another capacitor say 100 microfarad and this may be say a 1210 package you can see here how it pushes down the lower end and we may need say four of those push us down to the target frequency. So you can see here, if we include our voltage regulator module, which goes inductive, starts off low and then goes inductive, you can see that we've dropped the impedance all the way up to 478 megahertz just by adding those two types of capacitors. We can also import capacitors via the new S primary import feature. We select a capacitor, say an 0402, and import it. And here you can see we've put in this curve up here. We may also need a, a few of these to have an effect. You can see it pushes down the BDN at quite a high frequency. So what we basically have is a number of different values of capacitors to push the PDN down up into the maximum frequency. Here in this case we're up to 1.2 gigahertz. Also, we have the ability to look at uh, the projected EMI. So, if any of the odd harmonics of our clocks happens to match the peaks in the PDN, then it can emit radiation. Here we have 46 dB at 12 gigahertz. This can be adjusted by linking the stack-up planner to the PDN planner. If, for instance, we select a 8-layer stack-up, you see we have 14 mil in the center between the two planes. Going back to the PDN, I will just go to the one we just created. We'll just open up the eight layer stack up that we had. If we look at the EMI from this, you can see it's quite high. Particularly up around 25 gigahertz at 64 dB, which is way over the FCC class B limit. So we need to reduce this. So what we can do is go back to the stack up planer and put in a thin dielectric between the power planes and reread this back into the PDN planer. And you see it's dropped our noise considerably. The components that we have in the PDN list view can also be exported to Excel for a bill of materials. Next we'll look at the ICD co-planer waveguide planer. You can see here we have five different configurations. These can be used instead of microstrip because they exhibit less loss. And you can insert series and shunt SMD components which match the thickness of the traces and reduce impedance discontinuities. Uh, they can also be used for instance with dual co-planer waveguides with 30s differential pairs 
with a ground plane underneath. You can have single and dual coplanar waveguides. Uh, these can be used on flex instead of using crosshatch for impedance matching. You can have ground pores on either side of the differential pair. And there's also dual coplanar strips. And these are ideal for routing Ethernet interfaces which have to be isolated to 2.25 kV. Just to recap, we have seen the ICD stack up planner, PDN planner, and coplanar waveguide planners, how they integrate together, and two other EDA tools to improve your design efficiency. Thank you very much.